Hello, Jeff here from Easy Language Mastery. I want to see if I can use Chat GPT to help me learn easy language. So let's pretend I don't know anything about easy language and let's see if we can use Chat GPT to help me learn TradeStation's easy language programming language. So here we are, I've opened up a new chat. One of the first things I like to do is prime chat GPT with a particular prompt telling it what we're about to do. And I really, what I'm trying to do is, hey chat GPT, I want you to play a certain role as we move forward. So I have a bit of text I wanna show you. So here is the text. It's uh, your task is to help me to learn TradeStation's easy language. Pretend you're a professional easy language programmer. You don't know any other computer languages. You only know easy language and you know that that and you know that language well. You've been writing easy language code for over 20 years and you use your skills to write easy language strategies that trade the futures markets. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm priming it to say, hey, ChatGPT, pretend you're a professional programmer. I want it to be in the right frame of mind, so to speak. And so we get the last command here is, do you understand? So I'm gonna go back. Here's our new window. I'm going to paste that in here and press enter. You can see chat GPT is uh, generating a response and it says, yes, I understand as a professional easy language program with over 20 years of experience, I'm here to help you learn and understand easy language to the best of my abilities, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So GPT should be primed now to know easy language. Now, before we dive in here, what's really interesting is chat GPT is a large language model for just that, language, text. It wasn't designed to help you code, although it did pick up coding because as it was scouring the internet and being trained with uh, English and other languages, it did manage to pick up some knowledge about coding, including easy language. But I've been playing with this for a while and it's far from perfect. But let's see what we can do here. So I'm gonna pretend I'm a new programmer. I wanna learn easy language. And let's get started with some basic questions at the 2000 foot view. We may ask it, provide me some websites that can help me with learn easy language, provide links. All right, you could see it provided five. Uh, it's interesting to note that it did pick my website, Easy Language Mastery. I've done this before and it's never come up with mine. So I think it's just trying to flatter me. And now we have Big Mike's Trading. We have Easy Language Library. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see what that is. Oh, it goes to nowhere. You know, this is the thing with ChatGPT. It doesn't necessarily have everything correct. Um, let's see where this goes. Yeah, another place. Let's see if we can just look at domain. Yeah, I don't know what this was, if they had something there at one point, but nothing there now. So you gotta be careful. You know, some of these don't make sense in the sense there is nothing relevant to easy language. We can do, um, give me five more. All right, it's finishing up here and we can see it went to Easy Language Academy, which doesn't look like it exists. The indicator market. Well, that looks like it does exist. I'm not sure if they have easy language relevant stuff here. Easy language code? No. Easy language, uh, the wiki? This makes sense. Uh, we don't have to necessarily go there. Yeah, TradeStation moved around some of their material, so this makes sense that ChatGPT was actually trained on uh, data that's already a couple years old. So that's not showing up. And then easy language support, yeah, none of that really comes up. So, you know, it's not really finding anything other than it did find TradeStation's website as well as easy language mastery. And of course, this wiki, TradeStation did recently move that, but that is a good area um, to look. So it's not really doing that great at finding websites. Let's see about YouTube channels. So provide me some YouTube channels that might, how about help me learn easy language, provide links. All right, provided five websites. The first one is TradeStation. And yeah, it looks like it went to the TradeStation channel correctly. And then of course, there's Easy Language Mastery. Now I notice it says not found. And what I believe here is, I'm not sure if YouTube's changed this recently, and I believe they did in the fall of 2022. 
you need an at sign there around the name and that still didn't work let's see if that will come up this way there we go so you can see I think the URL scheme has changed so you know changed based upon uh, time over time and thus when chat GPT was trained it has information that's not correct so I imagine even these trading tech tips that's probably not going to the right place we probably want to remove that and uh, put an at sign there Nope, that's still not working. So anyway, it's all kind of suspect. A lot of these aren't going to come up. Again, this is because ChatGPT was trained uh, for languages, not necessarily for scouring URLs or learning to code. And as stated, it was also trained on information that's already a couple years old. ChatGPT's memory is frozen in time on when it was trained which I was believed it was up through 2021, if I'm remembering correctly. So it's, it's kind of striking out on these. It does recognize that TradeStation, though, is uh, out there. Here's a new one. What is some advice for new programmers to learn easy language? All right, it's given five tips here. Start with the basics, practice with sample code, learn from experienced programmers, read the documentation, be patient and persistent. Those are all pretty good tips to get started. Let's focus in on number one. You know, let's start with the basics. Easy language is a programming language, so it's important to have a solid foundation of programming concepts, such as variables, functions, loops, and conditions. So this is a good place to start. I would also recommend, yeah, practicing other, with other people's code is great, but let's start out with using ChatGPT now as kind of a guide to help us learn some of these concepts. So let's put in here about uh, studying some of these basic concepts here. Let's actually ask it, please expand on point number one. Okay, now we can start to see ChatGPT is getting into more information that is uh, more relevant, uh, which is language, natural language. So we're gonna start with the basics and it says variables. Here, you know, it's going to start out with some of the concepts that we should um, start to learn first. So it's uh, listing out variables and it's telling you what a variable is, functions, loops, conditions. So then it recommends they can go online to find resources along those areas. All right, let's ask it, give me an example on how to use variables in easy language. We've identified variables as a basic concept we want to master. Okay, it gave a lot of information here. Maybe too much in my opinion if we're just starting out with variables, but it says, here's an example of how to use variables. Say you're writing a simple strategy that buys future contract if the price goes up by a certain amount and sells a contract and price goes down by the same amount. So, but it has some comments in here. So it gave us a actual simple little strategy and it says an input variable for price and an input variable for price change threshold. And then here is a variable to hold the initial price and a variable to for the buy price and the sell price. So we can see that this is how ChatGPT gave us some examples of what a variable is. You might ask, okay, if you get a little more into this, how do you define a string variable in easy language? And here we go. Variable my string with empty brackets. This looks really good. That's exactly how you would define it. But notice it says here you can use the string keyword followed by the variable name, but it didn't do that. So here we start to run into issues with what GPT really knows about coding. It's interesting to note also it put up here CSS. Well, this isn't CSS code, or it shouldn't be CSS code. And what did it put up here? Java. You know, I'm not even sure. Um, off the top of my head, this looks like easy. Like this would generate or compile as easy language code. But again, we have to be careful here. But this does seem to be showing us how do you define a Boolean value? Here we have a discrepancy. It says we're going to be using the Boolean keyword followed by the variable name. And, that's not what it shows. What it's showing is actually uh, correct. I believe that is the correct way to define a variable in easy language. So it gives us, this is the actual definition, then it goes and gives us an example and it puts a comment in here. 
and uh, overall this looks correct. So this ChatGPT may be helpful in helping you uh, remind you or, or learn about certain concepts. Another big popular concept, of course, are if-then statements. Let's ask it about that. Show me an example of an if-then statement. Here it says the code is in JavaScript. Now it's saying it's SQL. <laughs> but this does look like it's correct, and then it does have uh, the correct syntax. What if you want to code up a switch statement? I'm going to put stop generating. You can see it can be pretty verbose, but that can be to your advantage. If you're new to easy language, you can read about that. I forgot how to code a switch statement. Can you give me an example? All right, it says easy language does not have a switch statement. That's not correct at all. Switch, it does have a switch statement. And what it did give us is an alternative, which is just an if then else statement here. So that's not right. It does have a switch statement. I'm gonna put in here, that's not correct. Easy language does have a switch statement. And we can see here, it doesn't like this either. It says, my apologies, you're correct, easy language. Um, does have a switch statement which it calls case and it gets that wrong. So already, you know, it's off the rails here. It doesn't know that easy language uses a switch statement and it's trying to give us a different type of code here. Here it says it's SQL. So again, it's not very helpful in this regard. So I was hoping to use ChatGPT to help teach me some basic concepts, but it's just not there yet. And I'm really not going to fault it too much because it is a language model. It's for generating text. And we can see with coding, it's just utterly confused in regards to this. So I would, wouldn't take anything in regards to coding too seriously. I'm going to continue to watch ChatGPT because I think uh, it and is also other versions and newer versions from other companies, these types of language models, they're going to be focusing on, on computer languages. There are some that are already out there and they're going to just focus on coding and we're going to see some very impressive stuff in the not too distant future. That's my hope. However, at this point, you can't take it seriously. It's not providing accurate information and you're better off to use uh, more traditional methods to learn to code.